is another great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, known as the one who always kept the secret of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, what was the secret and who was the companion? His name was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman ibn Jabir ibn Amr radiyallahu anhuma. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhuma. May peace and blessings be upon him and his father. Al-Yaman was born in Mecca. He was from Mecca, but he had committed a crime in Mecca and he ran away from Mecca to Medina because they were looking for him in Mecca a long, long time back before Islam. So he came to Medina and he had a treaty with Manil Ashhal to look after him. You know, he, there was an alliance between them of protection. And so he married from amongst them. And as a result, Hudayfa was born and several other children were born. And then the reasons why he was not going back to Mecca had disappeared. So he started visiting Mecca once again and so on. And he was from amongst those who visited Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca from Medina. This was Al-Yaman, the father of Hudayfa. In a group of 10, in order to say, we accept your message. We've studied what you've come with and we believe that you are the messenger. So this was the father Al-Yaman. But Hudayfa himself was a young boy. He believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without having seen him because he was based in Medina Munawwara. His father had seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but he had not yet seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Later on, he meets Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And something interesting happens. When he met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he asked him, the first thing he asked him is, O oh, Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, am I considered from amongst the Muhajireen or am I considered from amongst the Ansar? Where am I fitting in? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa looked at him and said, Hudayfa, you can choose where you want to fit in either from the Muhajireen or from the Ansar because your origins are from Mecca and you were born in Medina. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman says, I will be from amongst the Ansar. I choose to be from amongst the Ansar and he was known as an Ansari. Some people know him or have made him known as a person who was given the choice either from the Muhajireen or from the Ansar. So as he grew old, mashallah, the battle of Badr took place and he did not participate in Badr. The people might ask, why did this man, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, a great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa not participate in Badr? Interesting story. Him and his dad, his father, had gone out just prior to Badr and they were returning to Medina Munawwara and the kuffar had got hold of them and did not want to release them. Where are you going? They said, we are going to Medina. Are you going to Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa They said, no, we are going to Medina. So they said, no, we don't want you to go to Medina. We will hold you captive unless you promise us that you will not participate in the war against us. So they promised. They said, okay, we will not participate in the war against you. And they came to Medina Munawwara. When they told Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this is the promise we made, he said, in that case, you stay and don't participate in the battle of Badr, but you may participate thereafter in all because we are people who will fulfill our promise. Subhanallah. This is according to one of the narrations. According to another narration, they were held back until the war was over. And then they came back and they participated later on in Uhud. So much so that in Uhud, something very sad happened to the father of Hudayfa. And this, he was known as Al-Yaman ibn Jabir. He was killed in the battle of Uhud by friendly fire. What we would term friendly fire, which means the Muslimin, some of the people did not recognize Al-Yaman and they began to attack him. And Hudayfa said, that is my father. That is my father. By the time they realized what Hudayfa ibn Al-Yaman was saying, he was already martyred. The father was already martyred and it was a very sad day. But Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu an, he says immediately, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. Yaghfiru Allahu lakum wa huwa arhamur rahimeen. The same dua of, Jesus, of Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, Joseph, may peace be upon him. He says, may Allah forgive you. He is the most merciful, most forgiving. And he forgave them. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was very sad. When he heard that Al-Yaman was killed by friendly fire, what we would term friendly fire, he actually decided to pay the blood money for Yaman, Al-Yaman, but Hudayfa refused to take it for himself. Rather, he gave it as a sadaqah for the Muslimin. And he says, Oh Allah, bear witness that I'm giving this as a charity for the Muslimin. It was an error. It was a mistake. This was Hudayfa ibn Al-Yaman. And he was a man that was extremely intelligent and he could read people. He would look at people and tell you that this man don't trust him. Subhanallah. 
this man is a trustworthy person this man is intelligent this man this and this man that he was very intelligent himself Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman and he was very close to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam trusted him a lot a lot and one day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was seated and told him Hudayfa can I tell you a secret that you do not tell anyone after me he says yes now he was a person whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam knew that he keeps secrets so he says Jibreel alayhi salam has given me the names of all the hypocrites and here they are one after the other the names were given who knew these names Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman no third party ever found out who they were to this day we don't have the list but they knew that Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman knows the list so Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu went to say you know I'm Umar I want to ask you who are the people he says I cannot say I cannot say so Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu tried to say no you can let me know I won't let anyone know he says not at all so Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu says okay the main reason why I wanted to know is Umar's name from amongst those he says no it's not subhanallah imagine Umar ibn Khattab the mountain of a man whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says if shaitan if Umar ibn Khattab walks down a gully shaitan would go down another gully and here he is asking, am I from amongst the hypocrites? Just let me know. May Allah free us from hypocrisy. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman says no. Then the Prophet ﷺ was found that on some instances he was not available to fulfill Salatul Janazah upon certain people. Somehow he was not there. And Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman knew that these are the hypocrites. Muhammad ﷺ is not here. There is no Salatul Janazah being read by Muhammad ﷺ. It was read by someone else. Later on, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when he was the Khalif, he used to look at the Janazah. If Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was there, he would pray for them. If Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was not there, he would also find his way out and somehow he would not pray for them. Because he says, Muhammad sallallahu was instructed at one stage that the hypocrites, you do not lead for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free us from hypocrisy. But he was known as Sahibu Sir. The owner of the secret of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and believe me, he died with those names without telling anyone. That's why we do not know it today. So this was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. I can let you know something else that happened to him. Very, very interesting. The battle of the trench was when the kuffar of Makkah had come in large numbers to Medina Munawwara with great alliances and the people, some of the Jewish people from Medina Munawwara had supported them. So the Muslims were in, surrounded completely. And it lasted a few days because the wind started blowing and Allah sent angels and Allah sent the wind really to come and take these people off completely and to chase them back to Makkah to Mukarramah. So the wind and the angels had come in the assistance of the Muslimin, but there was a trench that was dug between the Kuffar and the Muslimin in a way that if they tried to enter the trench immediately, they would be attacked. They were unable to do that. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after several days when it was now coming to an end, he says, we need news from the other side. We need information. And who is it from amongst you that can go on the other side? Perhaps I will choose one from amongst you. Now remember, they were hungry. They were tired. They've been digging. They've, they didn't have much food. And they were really very tired, staying awake all night during the day, lack of sleep, what have you. And they barely had much in terms of clothing and so on. And Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa chose me and says, Hudayfa, be silent. You will go, you cross there, go right into the enemy ranks, find out the news and come back and tell us. And don't let them know that I've sent you there. So Hudayf ibn al-Yaman says, I was tired and I was really, you know, hungry and so on. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa made a dua for me. He says, Oh Allah, protect this man from in front, from the back, from the right, from the left, from the top and from the bottom. Once the dua was made, he says, I felt so secure and I felt so encouraged to go. My energy had returned and when nightfall came, I was gone. And quietly I went in darkness the wind was blowing so much that it blew away the fires of everyone so no one could actually see so i went right in and i was sitting right near abu sufyan and the others and he says abu sufyan got up and he says oh my people i sense that there is a problem this was a sharp man very sharp intelligent person it seems like what i'm about to say might get to muhammad 
So each one of you quickly hold the hand of the person next to you and ask him what his name is. Now Hudayf ibn al-Yaman is the only one who's sitting there and he's from the other side. So he says, immediately I took the hand of the person next to me and I said, hey, what's your name? So he told me I'm so and so. I said, okay, that's, that's okay. And it stopped. So that was how intelligent he was. He says, had that man asked me before I asked him, perhaps I was dead. But this was the protection of Allah. So when he said, each one of you quickly ask the next person what his name is. So I held his hand and I said, what is your name? He says, Fulan ibn Fulan, whoever he was. And he says, okay, that's fine. And they carried on. So Abu Sufyan later then said, the announcement I have to make is, we have been here for so long. The wind is blowing so much. Our horses are not eating. Our camels are dying. The animals are really suffering. We are suffering. We are hungry because as much as we have food, no fire is, is staying alight because the wind is blowing the fires off and our tents are being blown. We are struggling of hunger. The people are getting sick. I think this is now over. Let us go. I am going to Makkah. Whoever wants to follow, we are following. And so he decided to jump onto his conveyance and he started going away. So Hudayf ibn al-Yaman says, Wallahi, he was right next to me. If I wanted to attack him, he would have been finished. But because Muhammad وسلم, said that do not let them know that you are, from a, you are there. Come back to me, letting me know what the news is. I decided I'm doing nothing. I'm going back. So I went quietly back and I told Muhammad وسلم, what happened. And I said, these people are all going away. So he was very happy. But we learn one more thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written Islam for Abu Sufyan. So he was not killed on that day. Subhanallah. Otherwise, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was right there. But this man had to die a Muslim. So later on, Abu Sufyan accepted Islam. This is why my brothers and sisters, we need to learn from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The enemies of Islam, their hearts were softened by Allah. So try out the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Oh Allah, soften the hearts of the enemies so that they see the light. They become from amongst us. Wallahi, right now as we speak, there are people, enemies of Islam, who are busy considering entering into Islam. Some of them have already entered and we've seen the examples. In recent history, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen them and strengthen us for the deen towards the deen. Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, this was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. He was a, a beautiful person. He was known as a person who used to ask Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about the prophecies of the future and all the evil that is going to come in the future. So something unique happened. He says, all the people used to ask about goodness. And I used to ask about the bad. This is why my brothers and sisters, most of the prophecies of Qiyamah and the trials and tribulations that are to come, they were from the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. He spoke about them and he is the one who was speaking about the fitna and the trials and the tribulations that will come in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because he says, everyone used to ask about good and I used to tell Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tell me about what's going to happen. Is evil going to come? He says, yes. What type of evil? So he would describe it. And he would describe more and more and more. And thanks to him, we have the details. May Allah grant us all the ability to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start with. And then to all these heroes of ours. Now, he was the one also at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, and the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was a great sahabi. He worked very hard, simple person. He was from amongst those who took part in many of the battles. In fact, he was the leader of the army when they had uh, the conquest of Hamadan and the Ray and the, co the, the conquest of uh, Dainawar and several other places. In fact, even when it comes to Nahawand, he was one of the main leaders of the army who was sent in order to assist. And believe me, they did very, very well. He, he was the one whom, when the Muslim army was in Madain, Madain and they started getting sick, and the Muslims began to get sick. Those who had come in from the Mecca or Hijaz and so on from that part of the world to Madain. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman was the one who said, I think the weather here is not suiting these people. And I think this location is not suiting them. Let's find a better location. So the Amir said, okay, you find a good location. Until he went and he surveyed the land. We said he was very intelligent. He found Kufa. And this is when he said, let's all shift to Kufa. And Kufa was later taken as the headquarters of the Muslims. Whose idea was it? Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this great sahabi. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. One of the statements he used to say, 
And this is something that I think we would all relate to. He says, the best of you is not he who divorces himself from the world in order to earn the life after. Nor is the best from amongst you he who divorces himself from the life after in order to earn the world. But the best from amongst you is he who uses the world in order to earn the life after. So he has the best of both. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be, to be balanced, bearing in mind that as good Muslims, it's not wrong to have goodness in the world, but it is wrong to let that goodness distract you from the reality that you have a place to go to in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in the Akhirah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us 